My name is Steve Ford. I'm the Senior Product Manager for Adobe After Effects. And in this video, we're going to talk about the performance associated with After Effects CS6. Now, one of the key features of After Effects CS6 is a feature called the Global Performance Cache. And this is probably one of the biggest changes in After Effects in terms of how it works and how it uses all the resources of your workstation in conjunction to go as fast as possible uh, so that you can see what you're working on without having to wait for the machine. So the first thing I want to show you is, as you can see up from my workstation, is, well, I'm looking at this comp and I'm using my disk cache, which is part of the global performance cache. And you can see that via the blue line here. And I've also got things checked into RAM. Now, the nice thing is, is that it's reading it from disk very quickly and going into RAM. And then that means I'm getting, in this case, real-time performance uh, when I look at things. Well, there's a bunch of factors that come into play here. So in this workstation, I have two Intel Xeon CPUs, which means I have a total of 16 cores. Now, all 16 CPUs are not real CPUs. Eight of those CPUs are hyperthread CPUs. Now this is a HP Z800 workstation and the hyperthreading offers a lot of benefit for day-to-day -day operations of things like uh, applying an effect and so forth in After Effects. However, there's some things that you have to think about um, and how those CPUs work with the rest of your workstation when it comes to RAM, disk, and GPU. So we're gonna come back to that in a sec. Here's the most important part. I've got 16 CPUs and I've also got RAM. I've got to make sure that I've got at least two gigabytes of RAM per CPU, real or otherwise. In other words, for this C800, my minimum configuration from my perspective is 32 gigs of RAM. The other thing is, is that this workstation is also utilizing an Intel solid state drive. Now, the global performance cache is really oriented around using not just your uh, memory in a really effective way, but also persisting the frames to disk so that when you say close After Effects and open it again, you can come back to the exact point you left off. That's gonna depend entirely on having fast disk. After Effects will go as fast as the disk you can throw at it. And in, um, in fact, many of the workstations that I've seen users use, the biggest problem is fast disk. Not having fast enough disk will means that your CPUs won't be utilized and that the RAM actually isn't being checked into as quickly as it could be because the disk can't keep up. And the last component for After Effects CS6 is the GPU. The GPU, in this case, an NVIDIA Quadro 5000, is being used in a whole different way that has never been used before in After Effects. As an example, every pixel that we're rendering to the screen is now through OpenGL, which means that you'll get a faster experience in terms of how you interact with After Effects. The other side is, is that we put a full ray tracer into After Effects, meaning that we're using the optics toolkit from NVIDIA and in this case, leveraging the GPU to fully render the scene um, and getting equal results irrespective of what kind of card I have inside. Now again, that's gonna fall back to your CPUs if you don't have an NVIDIA graphics card, but if you do, you're gonna get a lot of really good performance out of that. The second most important thing after you look at the hardware is to go in how you configure After Effects. So as an example, when I go into my preferences, the first thing I wanna look at is media and disk cache. The global performance cache is oriented around, again, persisting your frames and layers in a very unique way so that it can render as fast as possible or only render what's necessary from that perspective. So the whole point is, is you want to make this as big as possible and you want to be able to assign that to a disk that is separate from your footage and your system disk. Again, I highly recommend using solid state media. The faster the disk, the better. The second component is around memory. And again, I mentioned that there were 16 CPUs in this workstation. Having two gigabytes of RAM per CPU is really important as a minimum requirement. The other side is, is that we're also saying that all the RAM can be shared across the Adobe applications within Production Premium. So that means we're reserving six gigabytes for all other applications outside of Production Premium, and in this case, 26 gigabytes for Production Premium. Now, when you come into multiprocessing, this is where the CPUs come into play again. As an example, if I turn this feature on, essentially I'm gonna use, in this case, 16 CPUs. Now remember, eight of those CPUs are not full CPUs, they're hyperthread CPUs, which means that After Effects is gonna treat it like a real CPU because that's what the operating system reports to us. That being said, I wanna reserve a bunch of CPUs. In this case, I know that eight of them are not real, so I'm gonna reserve eight CPUs for other applications. This means that the operating system has a more likely chance of assigning that frame to a real CPU, and the job will actually be done faster. In this case, we're gonna say that there's actually seven CPUs that will be fully used. The whole point is, is that you have to make sure that your disk, your RAM, your graphics card, and your CPUs are working in harmony if you're to really effectively use multiprocessing, the RAM for all the applications in the suite, and to really get the most 
out of the global performance cache. In this video, we looked at how to take advantage of your workstation and optimize the performance of After Effects CS6 and get everything to work in harmony. My name is Steve Ford. I'm the Senior Product Manager for Adobe After Effects. Thanks for watching.